Bumblebee is the latest film in the Transformers franchise. It's a prequel to all the other Transformers films, or maybe a reboot. I'm hoping it's a reboot. And as the title would suggest, it's a standalone film about Bumblebee. It takes place in 1987. Haley Steinfeld finds an old broken down VW Beetle that just happens to be Bumblebee, who's hiding from the Decepticons who are looking for him because they're all trying to take over the Earth and wipe out all the Autobots and stuff. This is the first live action Transformers film to not be directed by Michael Bay. Instead, it's directed by Travis Knight, director of Kubo and the Two Strings. And after 11 years and six films, we finally have a really good Transformers film, thank God. And I'm not saying thank God as a lifelong Transformers fan, I'm saying thank God because I don't have to experience another Michael Bay monstrosity of a Transformers film anymore. Every single thing that you couldn't stand about those Michael Bay Transformers films is not present in Bumblebee at all. There's no idiotic characters, there's no cringy, horrible, disgusting humour that just makes you roll your eyes and wish you weren't there. There's no never-ending bloated action scenes that feel like the final battle every single time. There is humour and action in the film, obviously, but compared to the first five films, it is so scaled down. I loved how small scale this film felt. The stakes are high because there's Decepticons on Earth and they're threatening to bring their army to Earth and wipe out humanity, so the stakes are high, but it's not a high stakes feeling film. This film is really a film about Haley Steinfeld and Bumblebee bonding. It's the kind of premise that you would have seen in a Spielberg film in the 1980s. In fact, this film is pretty much the live action version of the Iron Giant, just with Bumblebee and some Transformers stuff in there. And that's what makes this film really good. It has characters that you legitimately care about and it has heart and emotion that actually works. Quite a few times this film actually gave me the feels because I cared about Haley Steinfeld, I cared about Bumblebee, I cared about the relationship and their bond. Their bond and their friendship really is the backbone of the film. Had the friendship not worked, the film wouldn't have worked. Simple as that. And if any of you guys have been watching my videos for any period of time, you'll know that I'm a sucker for 80s coming of age. I love that stuff. And this film has plenty of 80s coming of age with Haley Steinfeld character mainly, obviously. And again, I cared about Haley Steinfeld. She just recently lost her dad and she was really close to her dad. Her friendship with the guy next door was good. I just love all the coming of age aspects of this film. I love the 80s aspects of this film. The 80s references are really great. One especially with The Breakfast Club, that was awesome. The film isn't without its problems for sure. My biggest problem with this film is actually the human antagonist element. John Cena plays like the main agent guy going after Bumblebee and the other Transformers and Haley Steinfeld. I just didn't buy John Cena as the bad guy, he just doesn't have that kind of bad guy persona to me, plus his acting in general just wasn't all that refined, he's still got a ways to go before he can start leading major films. And there are some attempts at humour that didn't work for me, everything revolving around Bumblebee and Haley Steinfeld bonding and Bumblebee interacting with the world, that stuff always made me laugh, but anything revolving around Haley Steinfeld's family didn't really work that well for me, especially when they try and throw some comic relief with them, and when they get involved in the final battle at the end, that was kind of unnecessary and I got flashbacks to Shia LaBeouf's parents from the first couple Transformers films. At that point I was like, oh film, don't, don't do this, don't go down this rabbit hole again, I thought, I thought you learned. But they go away soon after that and you get back to the cool Transformers stuff that you wanted to see. Guys, it's like this, I've sat through five Transformers monstrosities directed by Michael Bay and I've practically hated every single one of them. I've been waiting for a good film in this franchise, again, not because I'm a fan of the Transformers from my childhood, I just want good films. The first five were not good, this is the first genuinely good Transformers film in this franchise. It's a fun adventure, it's a great coming of age film, it's a really good Spielbergian, Amblin-esque kid finds an extraordinary friend and has to hide them from the world and the government trying to find them kind of film like the Iron Giant. This is the first time I've walked out of a Transformers film and thought I want to see more. As long as they stay in this playground and keep on the path that Bumblebee has forged, we could finally have ourselves a really good Transformers film franchise. I'm gonna give Bumblebee a 4 out of 5. So guys let me know in the comments below what you thought of Bumblebee and if you want to see more of my stuff click on one of these things in a second and I'll see you all next time.